Hello viewers, I'm Ron Grant coming to you live and direct from Tortola in the Virgin Islands. A happy Thursday to each and every one of you. You're watching 284 Media. I want to thank you so much for your time. The Ministry of Health in conjunction with the BVI Health Services Authority is continuing its vaccination efforts across the territory with a very special two-week COVID-19 vaccine drive with a special emphasis on the weekends of August 27th to the 28th and again in September of course on the 2nd to the 3rd at the lobby of the Dr. Orlando Smith Hospital. Joining me to discuss the initiative is Dr. June Samuel, Acting Chief Medical Officer, and of course, uh, Dr. Marina Burdu, the National EP Manager. Of course, we are continuing the narrative as we uh, promote health and safety here in the Virgin Islands, and it's a conversation you don't want to miss. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break. Yo, everything good, Dad? Bye. This thing got me one way, Daddy. What do you mean? Ever since I hook up with this thing, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch it when I reach home. What are you really? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home. Keeping out that trouble, me. Wow. What's your name is? She? I talk about my city life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live, bring it home. One month free trial, turn into five. Five months turn into well. You know I huff. I watch him ball. I even watch him football. Dad, Nickelodeon, Paw Patrol. I am hook. Hook, I tell you. Viewers, welcome back. As promised, I am joined by Dr. Samuel and Dr. Uh, Badu. Ladies, I want to thank you so much for your time and welcome to our studios. Thank you for having us, Ron. It's great to be here. <laughs> it is always a pleasure. Now, we have seemingly, based on a resident perspective, uh, become very comfortable, in my opinion. We have somewhat uh, forgotten that COVID-19 still exists. The BVI Health Services Authority, of course, in collaboration with the Ministry of Health, is hosting special vaccination for COVID-19, like I mentioned in the introduction. Uh, Dr. Samuel, I want to begin with you. Are we all clear? So that's the reason that we're here, Ron. Um, we want to make sure that we have persons continue to be vigilant and continue to re remind individuals that uh, COVID is still out there. Uh, we are not all clear as yet. Um, and as we speak, there are some countries in the Caribbean that um, are thought to be having another wave. Lucky for us in the, in the BVI, we seem to be um, just having, you know, um, we haven't had any significant spikes in uh, um, our rates of infection. But we do continue to see persons who turn up positive, whether just on incidental testing or certainly even at the hospital, we continue to have persons um, who are admitted who um, are COVID positive, whether incidentally or have actually come in with, with COVID pneumonia. So it is still out there. And one of the things, as you said earlier, yes, you know, because we don't hear a lot about persons dying or persons being ill, you know, we, we seem to want to be letting our guard down. And we just want to remind persons that you have to continue to be vigilant and do all of the things to make sure that you prevent yourself uh, becoming positive. Completely understand, and I thank you for that. Uh, Nurse uh, Badu, I want to uh, touch really on, uh, we're going to get to these statistics, uh, some, some of what uh, Dr. Samuel mentioned, but I want to speak specifically to you on which vaccines will be available uh, during this drive. During this drive, we'll be having the, actually on island, no, we only have the Pfizer vaccine, the Pfizer COVID vaccine. So that will be the vaccine for adults. Starting from the age of, we give this vaccine is given to children from 12 years of age and older persons. Um, the, we are, will be given anybody who does not have, who does not yet have a COVID vaccine, they can come and have, start getting their series of vaccines. However, we are focusing mainly on our booster doses, our first and second boosters, and we are specifying 
persons over the age of 50 and over, persons with severe diseases like um, kidney problems, heart problems, mm -hmm. uh, diabetes, those persons we are urging to come out and have their booster shot taken. Thank you for that clarification. And I want to speak the, about the availability of vaccines, uh, nurse. Uh, during the week and weekend, uh, tell me about the availability and, and the times, of course. Outside of the drive that we are now put, putting on on the week, two consecutive weekends to come, all vaccines are available at all our health centers. Currently, we are doing vaccines at the Road Town Health Center from two in the afternoon, or if persons come earlier than that time, they can also have the vaccine, but they go up to 6 p.m. in the evening time. Our drive will start at 10 a.m. and runs to 3 p.m. on those days, Saturday and Sunday of this coming weekend of the 27th and the following weekend of the 3rd. We are urging persons to come out and we're not forcing you, but we're asking you to, for the benefit of your own health and the health of your friends, your family, and to extend the community to come out and get yourself vaccinated. For that reason, persons may feel healthy. They might say, okay, I have no COVID, but a healthy person can be a carrier to the person whose immune system is weaker than their own. And so we want to avoid any severe illness to the point of death. And so we're asking you to come out and have yourself vaccinated. Thank you so much. Now, uh, Nurse, the UK Joint Commission on Vaccination and Immunization have recommended second booster doses during vulnerable populations as a precautionary strategy, of course, to maintain high levels of immunity. You mentioned some target groups before, but can you speak specifically uh, to the targeted groups for the boosters? The boosters, uh, the boosters will create a greater sense of immunity, longer period, and protect those persons from becoming very ill if they should come down. The va vaccine also, that booster dose also protect you from getting severe complications if you should have, vac if you should have the COVID virus and to prevent you also from, get, from dying. Thank you so much. Now, ladies, I, I, I have to touch on updated statistics. Of course, uh, once the the protocols uh, were relaxed in the territory. We no longer necessarily got updated statistics, which is mm -hmm. fine. But since I have you here, I do want to take the opportunity to ask you, have we seen a rise in uh, COVID cases recently, as well as deaths? Of course, we're coming out of our festival activities where uh, there was pretty much no social distancing. So I want to get some updated statistics on that. Either of you can speak on that. Okay. From since the onset of the COVID, virus. We are now almost two years into this era. And uh, last year in May, June, July, we had the spike yes. where we saw numerous persons die, getting sick and to the point of death, which was very traumatic to families, loved ones, friends. Mm -hmm. um, after the, at the Following that, that onset of the uprise in the vaccines, in the disease, we move rapidly and because of efficient and rapid surveillance, monitoring and vaccination, we saw a decline in the number of cases and the severity of the disease of persons coming down with the virus. To this point, we there is a decline in the uptake of the vaccine now because some, most of, if not all of the protocols have been removed. Yes. And it's not only here in the BVI, but throughout the Caribbean and the other countries. Mm. However, I think that has caused persons to become very complacent and 
what is happening, persons are having mild symptoms and they say we have the cold uh, or just have a cough mm -hmm. or we just have a temperature and it's nothing. And so there is no testing. So we really cannot say that we have a decline in the cases or we have an uprise in the cases. Mm -hmm. And that is as a result of the lack of persons actually getting tested. Is yes. That what you're saying? And but one of the things I want to draw our attention to, Ron. So even though, you know, just generally in terms of prevalence, you know, we the you know we're not seeing a significant spike, but certainly at the hospital we've continued to see. You know, we have our, our unit, our special care unit there, um, and on average we would have three to four persons in hospital who are COVID positive. Now, they may not have come in for that reason, but on admission, um, you know, all persons who are admitted get tested. And so we're picking up, you know, just on average every week, three to four persons who are positive. And this week we've had two persons in hospital who actually have COVID-related pneumonia. So. You know, it is still out there um, and, you know, we just want persons to be to be cognizant and be vigilant. It's important to to understand that the persons who are most at risk is now the older population and persons who are immunocompromised. And very often these persons are at home. So most of us are out and about and we're moving around in the community, the virus is essentially circulating at a low level. So we may be taking it home to persons who are immunocompromised and, and or older population. As a matter of fact, that's the age group that we're seeing turning up positive um, quite often at the hospital, you're over 65. So, you know, coming out and, and maintaining your vaccination, um, getting your vaccination, getting boosted, it's just an additional layer of protection, um, not just for ourselves, but for those persons who we may be coming to contact with in our families. Completely understand. For the sake of uh, just putting it into perspective for the viewing audience, within the last uh, few weeks, or first of all, as it stands, how many persons are uh, hospitalized uh, as it pertains to COVID-related illness? At the moment, two. Okay. and. At the moment, based on the last uh, a few weeks, maybe two months or so, uh, how many deaths have been COVID-related? Um, so we haven't um, officially um, indicated um, any deaths. The Ministry of Health would need to indicate that. Understood. Um, but at the hospital, uh, we haven't had any persons who've died from COVID-related issues. Thank you so much for that clarification. Uh, ladies, I want to thank you so much for your time and, of course, uh, coming to speak to the general public. We are in no way, uh, I want to make this clear, in no way insinuating fear. Uh, we want to make sure that the public knows that this vaccination drive is solely uh, to build better resistance and immunity against COVID-19. It is still a choice and persons have the flexibility to come or not to come, but you are encouraged. So thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for putting this into perspective. I continue to wish the both of you the very best as you execute your duties. Can thank I, you. Thank you very thank much. You but I would us. like to say something else sure, while please. I'm on this vaccine. Um, because I'm very passionate about the immunization of children. Mm -hmm. And so I'm asking parents and guardians out there who have children, or ch who has a child or children who have started their vaccinations, like I'm talking about the childhood vaccines, DPT, polio, measles, measles. chicken pox. If your child is behind, please contact your nearest health center and speak with your nurse to have your child fully immunized. And those who have not yet started, those children can be started with their vaccines. It is very important that these children have their vaccines because they are also a layer of protection for the elderly people living among them in their homes. Thank you so much, uh, Nurse, for that uh, reiteration of uh, vaccines amongst our kids. Uh, viewers, that is all the time we have. We will see you later. Bye-bye.